This episode is brought to you by our partnership with Suncoast Credit Union. So in the very beginning, I wouldn't necessarily start with sharing out like deep emotional things. We would yeah. kind of be like, um, do you prefer chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? <laughs> like it would just be kind of getting comfortable with sure. the routine of talking to your peers. Um, but it definitely helps them chat with each other in a way that builds relationships. I think the kids get to see who is like them and who's not like them, but we're kind of building the ones that are not like you are still part of the class family. How can we get them involved? So they get to mm -hmm. really interact with each other and see how they can build a bridge. Hey there, I'm Jessica Solano, Director of Recruitment and Engagement with Polk County Public Schools. And today I have another fabulous educator with us. I have Jessica Curatolo from North Lakeland Elementary. Hi. Hey, welcome Jessica, how are you? I'm wonderful, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic. Um, and plus, your name is Jessica. Yes. I'm a Jessica. Our producer is Jessica. We got Jessicas all around because yes. Jessicas are the best. Wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm excited to have you here. You have, um, you've really just kind of started your teaching career in your fourth year, but you're hitting the ground running and mm -hmm. doing amazing stuff. It has not made you shy away from leadership because you've been a part of our Leading from the Classroom mm -hmm. uh, cohorts. Do you remember what class you were? Five. Class five? Yeah. Awesome. So in that program, Jessica got to be a part of, with other teacher leaders and building her capacity as an instructional leader, mm -hmm. created an action plan, took it on campus. Um, so really moving mountains and doing big things. I love it. But today, um, Jessica, I really wanted to bring you on because you do some really cool things in your class with morning meetings. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of goes beyond student engagement, collaboration, social emotional skills. You kind of tie it all together with this concept of morning meetings and then how that really changes the game with how your students interact with each other, with you, and then how it's impacting their learning overall by taking this time at the beginning of the day. So mm -hmm. I would love to get us to focus that and try to ignite the shift in how we prioritize time in class to enable uh, moments like this. Okay. Right. So my first question for you, mm -hmm. let's kind of set the stage. Okay. Um, one of the things that makes your classroom unique is these morning meetings. So mm -hmm. um, you're using them to build relationships, build those social emotional skills. So for everyone who's kind of like, I think I've heard of a morning meeting, I don't really know, maybe it's like a pre-K thing or an elementary yeah. thing. Why don't you tell us what does it actually look like to have a morning meeting? in your classroom? So I'm very lucky because my school has actually built it into our schedule. So we have oh, from nice. 7.40 until 8 o'clock to do morning meeting time. Um, a lot of schools do it differently, but in Polk County, we have a curriculum that we can follow. It's called Stanford Harmony. It's kind of our tier one curriculum to help um, just kind of guide the teachers. It has like a structure we can follow. Yeah. Um, and I know we could modify it to fit every class's needs, just the way we would modify like um, our Reading Wonders curriculum or our math curriculum. Um, but my school has it built in, so we have a set amount of time that we can talk and do things morning meeting related with our kids. Yeah. So if you're following the Stanford Harmony structure, it starts out with just kind of a greeting. So we make sure we're saying good morning. Mm -hmm. If the kids haven't heard good morning, at least they heard it now. So mm -hmm. it kind of sets the tone with that. Yeah. Um, so it's just a quick little greeting. Then I do share out. And so usually with share out, it's one to two or sometimes more kids that want to share out anything. Okay. Um, they get to share out toys if they have something cool. They could share out good things that they did over the weekend. They could share out something fun that's happening. But they also get to share out things that aren't so great so a lot of them will share out like something that their sibling did that really bothered them yeah and that kind of tells me like okay we're gonna have a little bit of a rough <laughs> day um they'll share out that their animal passed away and then that like kind of helps me understand like what's going on so they share out a lot of different things it definitely takes a while to get to that step because they don't always feel comfortable in the beginning sharing mm -hmm. stuff out like that right. um but once they do then they love sharing out that's their favorite thing if for some reason we're having like a morning where we're really rushing or like our classes are combined because there's no substitute things like that speaking truth all they want to do <laughs> is share out like at the very least they ask me if they can share out and yeah. so they really love doing that um, after they get to share out and the kids can ask questions and stuff like that um, we move into where we actually start a topic or a task and so Stanford Harmony actually has discussion cards that give us things to talk about and we also have um, activities that we can do so okay. it's kind of like a three-step system and you can modify it to fit your needs like we're given 20 minutes so we can do it while the kids are eating breakfast and getting ready for the day but I'm sure other schools it might look very different and that's right. okay Nice. So it has like this kind of organic component, right, where the students all come in, like you're saying, 7.40, 8 o'clock. Or do you guys sit on the carpet? Are you doing it at your desk? How, so do you, how does that look? before COVID and like separating and stuff, it was all on the carpet. I love the little circle and everything yeah. like that. However, we're doing it at our desk now. Okay. Um, I know that the social distancing isn't 
as necessary now, but I still don't want everyone up together next to each other on the carpet. Sure. So we're still doing it at our desk, but a carpet is a great way to do it, I'd say, just to get the kids feeling like they're all in a circle, we're all like listening. But there's definitely um, rules, like eyes are on the speaker, mm. no one is on their like iPad or they're not talking or anything, all the attention is on whoever's talking. Yeah. Um, it's That is like our focus for the morning. So it, just like we would take reading seriously, and math seriously, that's what we're doing for the awesome. morning. Awesome. Awesome. So you have this like organic time, they're sharing personal things, yeah. maybe fun things, not so fun things. Yeah. And then you have this structured time where you can hit on a topic or a task. Yes. And is that something that all the students participate in? Is it mm-hmm. something that kind of like they partner share? Is it just kind of like this group discussion activity? Um, it kind of depends on the task. So I have three different like categories of how we do it. So the first one is the discussion cards that come straight from Sanford Harmony. Those ones are literally just a question prompt. So like one of the prompts we did last week was like, what is something that you procrastinate doing? Mm. Another one was like, what do you think is a waste of your time? It's like, it's like funny things where they can share out stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Or if you could snap your fingers and go anywhere, where would you go? So like those ones to me aren't as serious. So it's just kind of help the kids get to know each other. Yeah. And usually they'll just kind of raise their hand or all pull sticks. We just kind of all share out and they always like, will like laugh at each other, like comment on things, stuff like that. So it's really good. Another one is the actual lessons that go with it. So Sanford Harmony has units. Um, So one like really important unit that we just finished up was on conflict. And so Mm -hmm. the purpose of that one, it it taught them what conflict is. It had them learn about three different conflict animals. It was like a shark um, kind of initiates conflict. And then a turtle is very shy and backs down, but an owl is very wise and will think about things. So they had to identify which one they are. They had to um, give, like they had to look at scenarios and analyze what animal the scenarios are and kind of like figure out which animal they are and which one they aspire to be. And so some kids were straight up, I'm a shark. I always, like, I <laughs> start me. problems. But it's okay. Um, and then other kids were able to point out, like, oh, this person over here is an owl. And so, like, we were able to talk about stuff like that. We just started a unit on friendship today. Um, and so t- this morning we were analyzing what kind of things do they like and mm-hmm. do their friends have to like it. So one thing was, like, do they like spaghetti and meatballs? And, like, some kids would raise their hand, but then it was, like, does your friend have to? No one raised their hand, so we mm-hmm. talked about what's important. Other ones, it was, like, I'm a girl. And so some kids raise their hand and then do your friends have to be a girl? And some of the girls said yes. And some we were talking about that because right. some kids just thought it was interesting that they would only want friends a certain way. Right. Um, right. So those would be like the lessons and you can just follow those. There's like pacing um, and I'm sure you can get them from any other curriculum, but they're kind of like thematic lessons that you would follow. The other one I kind of consider miscellaneous tasks. Yeah. Um, those would be if I have to reteach expectations because behavior is not mm-hmm. right. We can use time like that because, okay. you know, it's that goes into social emotional things. We need to practice skills. Um, holiday activities. Mm-hmm. So um, for like St. Patrick's Day, we might do something like I'm lucky because they might think about why they're being lucky. Same thing for Valentine's Day. I am loved because and mm-hmm. we would kind of like reflect on stuff like that. We might do crafts, things like that. Yeah. Um, we also read a lot of social emotional learning books on Epic. There's a whole category. So if teachers don't have a lot of social emotional learning books, on the website Epic, you can get a whole thing. It's like, we'll read it and then discuss it. Okay. Um, Or just important discussions. If someone's really acting up with like not being nice or something, Mm -hmm. that will lead me into wanting to do a discussion like that the next day. Yeah. So it definitely changes each day. I do try to plan ahead of time what I'm going to do, but sometimes important things come up. Right. So if there's issues I'm seeing with the way the kids are talking to each other, interacting with each other, or just things around the campus, we might have to change and kind of have a let's come together discussion and modify our Mm -hmm. morning meeting. And I always think that's okay because it still follows the same structure. Yeah. um, But we really want to be changing morning meeting to fit each class's needs. Yeah. Well, I love the fluidity in that because then you're not so tied to a curriculum and you're talking about friendship when you really need to talk about prioritizing or something else. You know, I remember when I taught third grade, there were these three little girls and it was almost every year. There was a group of three. Mm -hmm. And if you've taught elementary girls, there's a group of three, you know, there's drama every week. You know, it's like drama central. (laughs) It's Yeah. The two, it's like the three cannot work. The two are best friends and the other two will be best friends. There's always things. And so I'm getting an opportunity like that to talk about how do I handle conflict? How do yeah. I be friends, close friends with more than one person? You know, and how do I express what I need mm-hmm. um, as a person and as a friend? That's really awesome to be able to kind of work that in. Yeah, I've had one class um, where I really have to talk to them about including other people. They're not necessarily fighting or having conflict, right. but they have people sitting over here that they're not really mm-hmm. including. So we kind of like read a book and had to discuss how can you get these people included in the activities you're doing. Like, yeah. we don't have to be besties, but we right. are a class family. So um, we've had to have a lot of conversations like that. Yeah. So it's not always going to be the same 
this particular class, I am having to do a lot more things on conflict resolution and like working on friendship, <laughs> but I haven't always had to do that. So you just change it based on whatever you see is going on. Just like you would, again, with reading your math and you're mm -hmm. changing the things that you're teaching, you would do that with morning meeting as well. Right. Well, and your classes change every time too. You'll see okay. like, oh, this this set of expectations and these classroom management strategies worked this year, but yeah. then you'll get the next class. And well, like, and right, I, never mind. <laughs> I actually looped up with my class from last year, but I oh, have awesome. a lot more kids this year. And so I know it's just those few students who got added into the mix it definitely changes the whole dynamic it's not the way it was last year so yeah kind of had to modify a lot of stuff even the kids who got along really well last year mm -hmm. are having issues this year um, mm -hmm. just talking to each other and stuff so it's just a lot of reteaching yeah and, yeah did you do harmony last year too in morning meetings we did mm -hmm. um, I think this is my third year doing Stanford Harmony um, mm -hmm. Every year we've gotten more and more training. Um, and since it's our tier one thing, that's kind of expected at yeah. my school. Um, but I know it's totally understandable if we're not doing solely Stanford Harmony. Like I said, if we have to do class discussions on X, Y, and Z, it's mm -hmm. definitely okay. Whatever is going to help yeah. with the social emotional learning. Yeah. Um, so I am lucky and fortunate that we do have a curriculum because that's really easy to fall back on if I'm struggling or mm -hmm. needing to like get started. Right. Um, but I do like to modify it to fit my kids' needs. Awesome. So there's some questions I just don't think would apply to them, so I'll skip those. Um, certain parts of the unit won't fit our time frame because um, we do only have the 20 minutes and a lot of kids do come in pretty late. So sometimes it's only 10 mm -hmm. minutes and then sometimes it's just really fast. We have like five minutes right. because, Working like it. I said, <laughs> things just happen. Right. Um, so yeah, we just... We roll with it. Yeah. Modify well, it. And I'm thinking about the people who are listening who maybe they have some exposure to the Stanford Harmony or they're like, I've never heard of this. Yeah. Or, you know, they're like, okay, morning meetings. What would this look like in my class? I think it would be helpful for them to know the impact mm -hmm. that this has had. If, even if you can recall back to um, the year where you weren't doing it right, compared before. to now. Or even if you're seeing beginning of the year and then they get in the routine of morning meetings. Yeah. Like, how are you seeing that spill over into collaborative groups and, and you know, just student um, performance, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the, everything. Um, well, I did just want to say in my internship, that was in a completely different county and we did not have any curriculum like this. Yeah. So I'm very used to like having to come up with just random questions. So that's totally okay too. Like <laughs> we just think like, of a new question every single day. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it really, really helps the kids because number one, they're talking. So kids for the most part are very talkative. It gets them like able to kind of just speak and get things yeah. off their mind. Um, so I feel like it's just a good chance for them to at least do some kind of talking. And it's still productive, but it still gives them a chance to talk about something that's not necessarily curriculum. Yeah. Um, I would say it gives them a good opportunity to relate to each other. It kind of builds confidence and trust because they get to start sharing things out. Mm -hmm. So in the very beginning, I wouldn't necessarily start with sharing out like deep emotional things. We would yeah. kind of be like, um, do you prefer chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? <laughs> like it would just be kind of getting comfortable with sure. the routine of talking to your peers. Um, but it definitely helps them chat with each other in a way that builds relationships. I think the kids get to see who is like them and who is not like them. But we're kind of building the ones that are not like you are still part of the class family. How can we get them involved? So they get to mm. really interact with each other and see um, how they can kind of build a bridge to the point where they can be peers and at least work right. with each other. Right. Um, I also think it's a good routine. So um, I had talked to one of my students about coming on to this podcast and I was <laughs> letting her know why. And um, I was telling her that we were going to talk about morning meeting and she said, we do the same thing for morning meeting every day. And I was like, exactly. It's a perfect routine. <laughs> it's a routine. So like, although I don't know if she meant it positively or negatively, <laughs> I take it as a good positive, thing. Positive, positive. I think so because um, like they know that we're going to do it and it's just a good expectation. And if it doesn't happen, Happen. Like, I just remember last year something happened and we had missed a few days and my kids were really upset and they're like, hmm. Missy, we missed morning meeting and they kept saying it. So it's just a really good routine. It really like starts the day out nice. We yeah. know, you know, that 740 to 8 o'clock, this is what we're doing. When we end it, then we're going on to the learning. But like, this is our priority. So I like that it starts at the beginning of the day. So this is our priority. We get to talk. Um, and I also feel like it teaches the kids how to talk really well. Mm -hmm. So not everyone has a good structure of like maybe family dinners where they get to sit down and listen to each other go around the table. Right. Um, and not everybody has a good chance to do that during school because every teacher is different. Mm -hmm. However, it does teach them to like listen. Eyes are on the speaker. You're not speaking. You're listening to give feedback. Mm -hmm. um, it would be more like, I agree. You're like, that's really funny or something. Not necessarily academic feedback, but it still is teaching those skills that we want to see in the classroom. Right. Because sometimes we get to the point of, okay, I got to do cooperative groups. Yeah. I need to have um, class discussions and these higher order thinking questions. Yeah, like 
academic teaming and yeah. accountable talk. And but if, if you, we don't teach them how to yeah, do that, like they, that's really maybe hard. sometimes why it's falling flat because we're not having time to practice that yeah. with non-critical issues like ice cream flavors. Yeah, right? just like silly things like can we even disagree correctly on yeah. a flavor of cake? Because that's, <laughs> that's you know, like we don't want them to be fighting over stuff like that right. but like that really does happen in the classroom sometimes if we don't teach them they're like the answer is c and i'm telling you it's c right. and they're arguing so we got to teach them how to talk to each other like yeah. no, you like vanilla but i really like chocolate right well we just recently had um, a mini conference called emerge symposium and mm -hmm. it was focused on upstream thinking so basically how do you solve a problem before it even happens okay and so to me you talking about this is very upstream and mm -hmm. that you're teaching them how to have the conversations, how to agree respectfully, how to allow people to have different opinions, yeah. but not waiting until they're fighting about it to get to that point. Yeah. And so you're building these relationships. And sometimes if we all kind of think back to some of the students in our class that struggled with conflict, I could see quite a few of their um, different situations not escalating and not getting to the point where they needed to yeah. leave the classroom or had a rough day and ended up getting in trouble if they could have had the practice of getting to regulate their thoughts yeah. you know, and being able to look at things from different perspectives within something safe like a morning meeting. Well, we'd spend a lot of time in the beginning of the year with the relationship building with the kids. Like, they do little, like, activities. I, like, every teacher always sets up something where the kids can get to know each other. Nice. But then if you don't continue it, you know, it kind right. of falls apart. And so I feel, feel like morning meeting is just a good opportunity for them to get comfortable with each other. Like, whether they like that student or not, they're going to hear their opinion on X, Y, and Z. Sure. Um, the, the, the cake or the ice cream. It doesn't matter. Whatever right. we're sharing out, like they'll get to hear each other's opinion and just get some used to talking comfortably. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just takes all of those things we work really hard on the beginning of the year and spreads it out throughout the entire year yeah. where they can chat with each other or learn to have those discussions, all the stuff that we want to see when yeah. we're doing curriculum. So it's like just a good practice every morning to right. get us ready for when we're doing those engaging academic conversations. Absolutely. Well, and I, I definitely want to kind of wrap up with like next steps. So someone's listening, okay. okay, how would I go ahead and do yeah. this? I want to hear that, but then also, if I can kind of like put a little spin on it, um, when I'm hearing you do this, so you're talking about routines and, mm -hmm. and, and making sure you're, and you're listening to someone, you're tracking the speaker, what do you do, though, if somebody, a student says, oh, I like this, or they're even, you know, give their opinion on things that they procrastinate on, like yeah. you said, and then someone else acts disrespectfully to them, kind of, even though it's an expectation not to mm -hmm. do that. So... I guess kind of giving teachers in your perspective, how can you set, how can you avoid that? Or if it does happen, what do you do paired with kind of maybe putting their mind at ease and these are some next steps. Okay. So one of the very first morning meetings that we have as a class is setting our morning meeting rules. So yeah. it always looks different for every class. Um, I kind of guide them to the rules that like I want, but right. you know, we're going to make you them together. Nice. Yeah. Um, and so like I hang them on the, ch on the um, board and we'll be referencing them. So if someone is, not doing whatever they should be like if they're let's say they're playing around in their book or whatever when they should have their eyes on the speaker right you know like we'll review what the rule is that's not being done correctly um they part of earning their morning we have starbucks in my school where they earn like say of up to five starbucks and so nice. they'll earn like the first ones their first starbucks part of earning that is morning meeting that's like your morning time mm. um and so if you don't follow the rules there are consequences that go with that so i would just treat it just like any other subject review the expectations if you have to review it every day that's okay if you have to put a student who's not listening next to you so they can see how you are Mm -hmm. modeling the expectations that's totally fine i would say it's definitely okay to treat it like any other subject if the expectations are not being followed in math what would you do you would likely right. reteach it there would likely be some kind of consequence or some kind of reflection so if right. you have to give them like a behavior reflection thing on like um how to spend time during morning meeting and what to be doing i'd say that's totally okay yeah um, i just think it's important to come up with the rules together so then everyone's held accountable i do have all my kids sign the rules once we nice. make them together because like we work on it so now that's what we're going to follow and i do it too so i can't be on my phone i can't be doing attendance during that time those are mm. um the rules that we developed so now i got to follow through with them yeah i love that part and mallory too talks about when she was teaching fifth grade uh -huh. how she has this independent reading time and a lot of us have that in our yeah. classroom but something that she does that i thought was really unique is that when they're doing their silent reading time she would be reading also yeah. and it, she wasn't doing attendance she wasn't doing lunch count or anything and i'm like man that would have been really great I, I of course was like yeah. okay this is the silent time i'm gonna hurry up and get my things yeah it's together. like just a few minutes yeah. moments a piece like it would be nice if yeah. they could just run it themselves but i feel like it's important if i want them to have relationships with each other i'm getting 
talking it with them. Mm-hmm. And I learned so much about them during morning meeting, things that they like, things that they don't like, how they operate, especially during the share out time when they're sharing things that happen at home. So yeah. I definitely want to be present and paying attention. Absolutely. Things always happen and that's totally okay if you need to do your last minute attendance. Right. No worries. Yeah. Um, but, but I do try to make sure. This is real. Yeah. I yeah. try to make sure those little rules that we wrote together, I'm following those as well. I love it. Um, so you had asked how to kind of get this implemented. Yeah. Um, I would say if you don't have any kind of curriculum or anything like that, just start off small. If there's a way to implement like the good morning, which I think every teacher pretty much does. Yeah. Um, and then the share out is a really big one. So if you're in like middle or high school and you don't really have a set morning meeting time, I would say maybe try just building in a share out time because it's only one to two minutes of kids just kind of sharing things that are on their mind. Right. Um, and then the topic or task could be curriculum related. So in, like while I'm talking about things that are part of the Stanford Harmony curriculum, you could just move into going straight into like your science curriculum or your mm-hmm. reading curriculum, just a time when they get to talk to each other. So as long as it follows the same structure, I'd say that that could still be successful doing the share out um, where they get to voice things that are on their mind and then moving into a time when you want them to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, You can always just come up with your own questions, topics, anything like that. That's what I did in my internship. And then in the beginning when I started, we didn't have the curriculum. Um, And sometimes that's even better because you're really tailoring it to your classroom. I would just say, um, what do you have to lose? If you have a few minutes that you can just get them talking, if there's any kind of issues happening in your class, see if this would help. It's definitely not a and all be all fixing everything. It's tier one, so we're still gonna have behavior problems that we gotta work on beyond morning meeting. However, mm-hmm. I feel like it does help the majority and that's kind of what I'm looking for from like a tier one expectation thing. Um, and so I would just say, why not try it? Just right. take a few moments every day. Um, even if you only did the share out where kids get to like talk about anything that's on their mind, that can be really powerful for them to get a chance to share things that are important to them, talk to their friends or even their peers that are not their friends, um, and just get some talking time. Because they don't yeah. always get to talk. We expect them to be learning and like mm-hmm. listening, stuff like that. And so that can be a good way to start your class if you just give them one to two minutes. That's yeah. it. Yeah, because well, they'll get their talking time in there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Just the one you want them Yeah, in. exactly. I love it. And when we do sessions, the teacher engagement sessions, we usually start with joy, successes, and shout outs. Okay. Which sounds really similar yeah. to that shout out time. We so do it's awesome. Lots of um, highs and lows is yeah. what we share out. And like, um, we'll do highs and lows of kids' weeks if they want to share out, but we also do it for the whole class too. We'll talk about like highs and lows that we mm-hmm. notice of the class. Um, there's just sometimes there's some really rough weeks, like after breaks, and there's just a lot of behavior. And it's like, we'll talk about the things that weren't so good, but we really want to highlight the ones that were good. So that'll come along with the share out time. Um, We always want to just make sure we're getting a feel for how the class is doing. And so like kids are, they're very like willing to share out and they'll tell me like, "Um, so-and-so did this and it wasn't very nice. Like we'll have to (laughs) kind of reflect on that. But then they'll also compliment others. Like I love the way so-and-so did this. And so it's just like, yeah, it's just a nice thing. I just love morning meetings. It's one of my favorite times I can tell. Yeah, it's just And it sounds so structured, which is it's not just like anything you want to bring to the table, you know, it's, and then hearing you talk about that really helps me feel like your class is a team. It's Mm -hmm. not just Ms. Caratolo leading the class. Yeah. It's, it's all of us together. I Try to be that. a little family. So sometimes yeah. you have to have some conversations. Sometimes That's they're right. tough. Sometimes they're not fun. Sometimes it's just we still love talking about things that didn't go great. And we got to reteach <laughs> it. But, you know, right. just like you would with your real family. Right. You got to do it. Awesome. Well, we always end with the same question. Mm-hmm. And so um, these are always so different. I love this part of the show. But if you could pick one thing in education that you would want to ignite a shift in, since this is the Ignite mm-hmm. Project, what would that be? Um, I would want to ignite students building relationships with each other. Mm. We focus a lot on teachers building relationships with students in order to get them motivated to learn and right. have better academic success, stuff like that. We know that's really, really, really important. We won't get anywhere if teachers don't have good relationships with students. But if we can set in times where they can build relationships with each other so they're mm. comfortable with each other and they're more willing to talk and they're willing to collaborate, then I think that's going to lead to a lot of success in the classroom. Um, the more we can teach them to have tough conversations, but also like fun and good conversations, that's going to lead to the things that we want to see when we're teaching our curriculum and our uh, core classes. So I would just want to focus the relationship building among mm-hmm. peers and students, and especially students who are not friends with each other. And I think morning meeting is 
just a good time to bring that all in. Yeah. It does help my relationship with them. I learn a lot from them, and it, it, it's yeah. just really fun to hear their opinion on things. But I think them getting to listen to 24 of their classmates say what they feel and think is a really good skill for them to listen um, and collaborate with each other and just practice the skills that we're going to want to see later in the day. Right. I love that. Those soft skills that we sometimes can kind of put to the side because mm-hmm. we're just focused on getting yeah. through, teaching the standards, getting through the curriculum, but that right. is so valuable. I love that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jessica, for being here today. Thank you I, I love me. the morning meeting. I can t- definitely tell how powerful it is. This mm-hmm. like 15, 20 minutes at the beginning of the day or sometime in your day. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have like a morning time, I just don't call a morning meeting. Call it whatever you want. Yeah. Just fit it in. Like <laughs> if you have like post lunch time or something, like anytime there's downtime, I would say it's a good time to just kind of have a, yeah. we could call it a family meeting. Right. Just any time to get them together. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be morning. That's just kind of what's built into our schedule. But yeah. I feel like it's really important. Just get it done whenever you can. Yeah. Awesome. I know people will be able to make it work. Yeah. I love it. That's what's so great about this is take what you can and, and make it look like it needs to look like in your classroom. Exactly. Awesome. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Are you fired up? You can continue to fuel the fire by connecting with us here in teacher engagement. Every month we host virtual all teacher seminars and we also have ongoing programs designed to support teachers wherever they're at in their teaching career. Whether you're a new teacher or a teacher leader, there is a way to get plugged in. Follow us on social media at at Teach Engage PCPS to see all that we have going on. Let's keep that spark alive and join forces with others who have chosen to stay ignited. Thanks for joining us. You can subscribe to the Ignite Project on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, or watch online at the Polk County Public Schools YouTube channel. To learn more about the Ignite Project and other Polk County Public Schools podcasts, go to polkschoolsfl.com forward slash podcasts.